So we are finally at a wheel. I told you that was going to happen. But a couple things before we actually start spinning I want to talk to you about. First thing is remember when I said you need to have a fiber that you haven't made such a financial commitment to that you're afraid of wasting any of it. But because you probably became intrigued by hand spinning by watching someone who's been spinning for a long time. And you see them and they spin and it looks so graceful and it looks lovely and great. That will not be happening to you, okay? It takes just a little bit of time to get to that graceful moment. In the meantime, here's what you're going to have. You're going to have big clunks of this, okay? You're going to have little, 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 tiny, 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 overspun, 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 overspun that just goes clanky and it, it, it all clinks up and it gets stuck and then you're going to have the times when your yarn is just going to take off on you and you're going to go, oh my gosh, and you have to start all over. There's going to be some wastage. Plan on that and just go with it, okay? Having said that, we can now sort of move on to the fun part. Let's just, let me get this all spun up onto the bobbin and we'll be ready to go. First thing I want you to do, let's say that you've taken my never-ending amount of advice and you've gotten some, some sort of a roving that you can just play with immediately, okay? Take a little bit of it and you want to sort of pre-draft it. See how this is much thinner than this piece here? And even then I can see little pieces like, I don't know where that came from, but we're going to get rid of that. We don't need that. All right, so you're going to kind of pull it out. What you're doing is you're getting a little closer to a real bit of yarn, okay? You're, you're taking the fibers, you're narrowing it down to a little bit closer to a real piece of yarn. And going back to energy as we're doing this. Now see, isn't this nice? And the other thing that's nice is you end up with a long piece of fiber to work with. So you can spin for, for quite a bit, okay? All right, so the best way to get yourself started is to use a leader pretty easy word to remember. It's going to lead your yarn onto the bobbin. And what I do is I take a strand, okay, tie a little knot here, just right at the end, and I don't know what this is called, but you know, you take it on and you just pull the non-knotted end through, so you have a loop, okay? Now, your spinning wheel is going to come with a little hook because that is how you are going to get your yarn through the orifice, through the opening, okay? What you're going to want to do is stick the hook right up and through whatever little orifice you have and pull through here, okay? Now, now that we've done that, let's talk a little bit about this part of your spinning wheel, okay? When you are spinning with a drop spindle or anything else, remember we talked about storing your spun fiber? This is where you're storing it, on the bobbin, but you can't have it all in one place or it's just going to make a big lump and it's going to start kind of collapsing in on itself and this is not good. What you want to do, your wheel of choice is going to have either sitting hooks that are just placed all the way across the two ends or you're going to have a sliding one like I have here. All that is is occasionally while you're spinning move it along so that you are spreading out your fibers, okay? Right. Now, if you look at your bobbin when you have your wheel, more than likely it's going to have like a wider round area and a finer round area. Start off with the widest of the bobbin ends that you have, okay? The reason is, think about this circumference and the circumference of your spinning part of your wheel. The closer that this is to here, the easier it's going to be to get the spin of your yarn into a nice, easy rhythm down here, okay? You can spin, you can treadle more slowly, okay, if you're using the larger end. And that just gives you one less thing to have to completely freak out about as you're working, okay? so. If you'll notice, my bobbin, I've got it all set up on the thicker end. Okay, next thing I want to show you. Two parts here. One is you've got the drive band, and that's connecting your energy making 
up to the top. Energy is getting made down here and it needs to be moved up. It gets moved up by how many times this is going to go around in the ratio to your bobbin. Okay. The next thing you need to know is there is on this wheel what's called a scotch tension. And it's the way that you control, you know, when you're, when you're working with a drop spindle, the weight of the spindle helps you pull out your fibers, okay? It gives you a resistance against those fibers. Same thing with your tension, okay? And you're going to learn how to balance how hard the wheel pulls against you. Remember when I was showing earlier how you were going to waste a lot of fiber? And I showed you how it went, okay. That's going to happen a lot because you're going to have to learn how to not let this, the wheel take your fiber away from you. Okay? So, that's what we're going to be learning. First things first, start your leader. Okay? And just, tr you want to treadle, by the way, when you're spinning yarn from fiber, treadle clockwise. Okay? Because we're going to be treadling counterclockwise later when I show you how to apply. So, right now, just think clockwise treadling. Okay, now, I just kind of take a little bit of this and fold it onto that loop, okay? The nice thing about a leader is it helps you judge how hard that tension is pulling. And there's absolutely nothing wrong, if you want, to pull the leader back out. If it just gets yanked out of your hand, then you know you've got too much tension on your scotch tension, and you want to just kind of undo that tension and try again. It's a really good time if you're just starting with a new fiber, kind of feel how hard it's pulling on your hand, okay? Having said that, what you want to do is start to spin. Remember, if you have worked with a drop spindle, you probably understand the spinning, but I'm going to explain it quite quickly to you. Let's get this started. Remember, I was talking about energy. I told you I was not going to let this go. Okay, so I am happily building my energy, and it's coming up through my bobbin, and it's coming through here, okay, it's this thing, and it's getting to my hand. All right, let me show you. When you spin, by putting your fingers right at the last little bit of what's been spun, you block the energy. It can't go. That's good news. Bad news is, that just means it builds up here. Now, as you're learning, you may want to actually stop spinning the wheel and let go and use up the energy you've built up, okay? Eventually, you'll be able to do that really nice balancing, okay? But let's take it like this. You're pinching right here. There's no energy going anywhere. What I get in the habit of doing is, you'll find that your fibers are spinning in this direction, okay? The clockwise direction. I take my finger and I just slightly unspin right at that apex of that triangle. Let's a little bit of the fibers get a little more loose, okay? So then what I do, here's what you're doing. You're looking for a triangle between where that energy is and where you are letting it get into the triangle. So I'm spinning, 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 building up energy, okay? And then what I do is I untwist a little bit, let go, and then I pull back and see how it just travels right up. See, look at that energy just go right up. And you can see when it stops being energy because it gets a little too loose and you can feel like, again, something you're going to make a mistake on, you're going to continue on not noticing that and you'll, you'll break it, start again. So let's say I've built my energy, put my finger here, build up, and as... I've pulled out, I have to let that scotch tension pull that strand just like you wound it on with your drop spindle. Okay, I let go of the energy. I let it travel right up into that triangle. And this is another reason why you want to draft, okay? If you haven't pre-drafted your yarn, there's a good chance your energy is going to go into a great big huge wad of fiber and just give it up. Just take it off and start again. Whereas if you've pre-drafted, there's just not quite so much to handle, okay? So then I treadle, I let my scotch tension take it, and my little triangle, I untwist, I let it go up. And so you can keep moving your finger 
And when you start to panic, just put your finger there and stop the energy. Okay? Just stop it. Say, whoa, I'm not, I'm not happy. I don't know what's going on. Let it go. Kind of get a feel for what's happening and let it go on through. So what you're going to do, you're learning how to balance how, much, how many times you're going to go around in your circle, how far out you can pull your little triangle and still be content and managing it. See, I'm letting it, I kind of stop and I untwist and I pull and I stop, untwist, pull, stop, untwist, pull. It's not quite so clean as I'm doing it slowly, but stop, untwist, pull. And as I do that, my, I just kind of let it slide through. I'm not necessarily having to say, hands move in, hands move out, hands move in, hands move out. It's more a motion of letting the fiber just kind of go through these fingers. See, I'm just, my hands, this hand of course moves out because it's pulling the fibers. But this one just kind of stays not so much out of the back and forth in such a really extra motion. You don't need to do that. And it also depends on how you're sitting. You know, let's talk about chairs quickly. Anything that's comfortable, just start off with a comfortable chair. Because I spin everywhere. I take my wheel to friends' homes for dinner and things like that. So just get used to spinning with a comfortable chair, your stocking feet, you know, and then you're, not, you're kind of set. Anyway, that's what you're trying to do. Please do not expect to be perfect at the beginning. Expect a lot of mistakes. Let's cover the biggest one where your yarn just disappeared. Okay then, that was, that's gonna happen a lot. So what you're gonna do is you have to go through and kind of find it, okay? And pull it out, use your hook, and this time you won't have a leader like you did when you absolutely started. You wanna put it over one of your hooks, and it's just like you used your yarn leader, okay? It's not any different. It's just that you won't have that kind of loop that you put the fiber in when you started absolutely from scratch. So you let this go in until you're comfortable. And all you do is kind of incorporate this end into here. And you might want to build up a little extra twist to make sure that join is nice and tight and then off you go again. Not a problem. If you build up too much twist, then go ahead and let's see, if I build up too much twist, dee 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 dee, just stop it. Okay, you can see you build up too much twist because it's kinking already right in here, okay? Just let it go. Let it all fade out until you feel that ending and then back you go into your rhythm, okay? Be patient with yourself. Put on some music, put on some football, something. Anything that will distract you, you'll find that you'll learn a lot better I finally caught on when I was playing some classical music and I was alone for an entire afternoon and I just kept going. And all of a sudden, the whole rhythm clicked and I was off and running. 